Friedrich Wilhelm August Froebel was born on April 21, 1782, in Oberweisbach, Germany. The village of Oberweisbach was set in the middle of the Thuringen Forest, which is where Froebel discovered his love of nature. At the age of 15, Froebel became an apprentice to a forester, and two years later, he decided to leave his apprenticeship and study mathematics and botany in Genia. By 1805, Froebel had become an educator at the Mutterschule in Frankfurt. There he was introduced to the ideas of Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi. Pestalozzi's general philosophy was that every aspect of the child's life contributed to the formation of personality, character, and reason. His educational methods were child-centered and based on individual differences, sense perception, and the student's self-activity. These ideas became highly influential on the development of Froebel's own educational theories. Over the course of the next 30 years, he expanded his ideas on educational development and published several literary works on the subject. In 1836, he dedicated himself almost exclusively to preschool child education and began manufacturing playing materials in Bad Blankenberg. One year later, having developed a radically new educational method and philosophy based on structured activity-based learning, Froebel established his Play and Activity Institute, which he renamed Kindergarten, in 1840. Froebel's Kindergarten Froebel created the kindergarten as an experimental social experience for children entering school, believing that children should be nurtured and nourished, like plants in a garden. Through his kindergarten, he was able to apply the educational theories he had developed over the years. Froebel once stated, Children are like tiny flowers. They are varied and need care, but each is beautiful alone and glorious when seen in the community of peers. In Froebel's kindergarten, adults help children to explore the world in a concrete way many years before they will understand an abstract discussion of art, nature, or geometry. He applied his methods of teaching through various activities, which reinforced ideas for the five senses. These activities were toys for stationary creative play, games and dances for healthy activity, and observing and nurturing plants for encouraging awareness of the natural world. Froebel believed a child's desire to play was nature's way to help stimulate the brain to grow. He viewed humans as creative beings and saw play as the engine of real learning. Froebel realized that an infant's brain is still forming, thus concentrating his efforts on children from birth to age seven. While this would not become scientifically understood for another 150 years, Froebel had an intuitive understanding of the mechanisms of the infant brain. His methods were used to build a foundation for symbolic learning by allowing for internalization of experiences. One of the primary tools Froebel used was a series of toys that he developed, known as Froebel's Gifts, and were intended to help a child's exploratory desire. Froebel developed Spielgabe, or play gifts, for his kindergarten schools. He created the toys for children to allow them to experience the order and beauty of the physical world. Gifts 1 through 6, the only gifts that Froebel identified as Spielgabe, consisted only of three-dimensional solid shapes. Although these six were the only ones he wrote about, Froebel used other gifts, which his followers later documented in their writing. Of these gifts, seven through nine were two-dimensional shapes, lines, and points. The final gift, Gift 10, dealt with the abstract concept of connecting points and lines to create a three-dimensional object. Beyond these first ten gifts, he used what he called occupations, which were various arts and crafts activities. These were viewed as different from his gifts, because gifts were meant to return to their original state, while occupations could not be undone. 
Froebel gifts help children to perceive the geometric building blocks of the world at a time when they are not able to understand them intellectually. There were three specific ways to interact with these gifts. Forms of life, which intended for the child to recreate something familiar from their own surroundings. Forms of knowledge, which allowed children to familiarize themselves with basic mathematical and scientific concepts. And forms of beauty, which helped children to see the interconnectedness of all creation by creating abstract designs. Froebel's gifts were the original educational tools and the first child development tools. Prior to Froebel, education for young children was essentially non-existent. Froebel's theories on child development, as well as the methods used in his kindergarten, inspired the work of many influential educational figures. Some of these figures included Maria Montessori, who was an Italian physician and educator, and was best known for the philosophy of education known as Montessori education. She was also known for her writings on pedagogy, which is the art and science of education and instructional theory. Rudolf Steiner, who was an Austrian philosopher, social reformer, architect, and esotericist, worked to establish the Waldorf education. Marguerite Schutz, who was a student of Froebel and went on to found the first kindergarten in the U.S. Although it was strictly a German-speaking kindergarten, this led to the founding of the first English-speaking kindergarten in the U.S. by Elizabeth Peabody in 1860. Once early childhood education became widely adopted, Froebel's ideas opened many doors for future development on kindergarten as well as preschool education. As a child, Froebel attended an all-girls school, which had a profound effect on his upbringing and how he viewed women. He also had strong support and encouragement from the women in his life, including his two wives. Froebel's first wife, Wilhelmina Hofmeister, aided in his educational endeavors and also helped him to develop his Froebel gifts. His later wife, Louise Levin, was a very sweet lady and also supported him in his efforts. Froebel saw mothers as the ideal first teachers of humanity. He believed that women were the best suited to nurture children and used them as teachers in his kindergarten. At the time, Women were generally not accepted as part of the workforce. However, Friedrich said, Nein, lassen sie sie lehren, translated to, Nay, let them teach, and teach they did very well. Although he greatly emphasized the role of women in education, he also believed that men should play a large part because he viewed education to be a family activity. Many well-known architects and artists have credited Froebel's gifts as being largely influential on their early childhood development. The gifts are often referred to as the basis of how these artists conceptualized their ideas. Most notably among these artists were Frank Lloyd Wright and Buckminster Fuller. Frank Lloyd Wright was a lifelong champion of Froebel's methods, and even established a kindergarten for his own children and their little buddies. Froebel's influence can clearly be seen in Wright's architecture. Buckminster Fuller created his iconic geodesic dome as a young child in kindergarten, and also shows influence of Froebel in his works. Other artists, including Paul Klee, Vasily Kandinsky, and Pierre Mondrian, were also among the artists influenced by Froebel's gifts. There is much to be learned from Froebel's theories on child development and education. He believed that children are not empty containers waiting for information to be poured into, and that it is more important to know how information fits together than to memorize the facts themselves. Humans are creative beings who are constantly looking to alter their world, and through this methodology, Froebel presented the tools that would allow them to flex this creative instinct.